How do we get energy from carbohydrates to ATP? Have you ever wondered why energy bars give you energy? Let's look what's inside a typical energy bar. It weighs between 30 and 50 grams and contains 3 to 9 grams of fat, 7 to 15 grams of protein and 20 to 40 grams of carbohydrates. Our bodies can use fats and proteins for energy, but carbohydrates are the main energy source for us. But how? Any carbohydrate molecule is built from multiples of carbon and water, hence the term carbohydrate. The simplest kind of carbohydrate is the sugar. A one sugar carbohydrate is called a monosaccharide. Link two monosaccharides together and you got yourself a disaccharide. Link a bunch of monosaccharides together and you get a polysaccharide. But when you eat carbs, your body breaks them down into simple sugars again, which are absorbed into the bloodstream. But they have to get out of the bloodstream and into the cells. So, as the sugar level rises in your body, the pancreas secretes a hormone called insulin, which directs the muscle and fat cells to take in glucose. Insulin's job is to bind to receptors on the cell's surface, causing glucose transporter proteins to come to the cell's surface as well and let glucose in. All the magic, also known as the production of energy, happens in mitochondria. Mitochondria produce energy through the process of cellular respiration. As you can see, for this reaction to happen, we need not only glucose, but also oxygen. So it's kinda handy to have a respiratory system that supplies blood with oxygen. And the oxygen in the blood is then carried around the body in the bloodstream, reaching every cell. So there is no problem in getting all the ingredients for the production of energy. You just have to eat and breathe. You can also see that during cellular respiration, a glucose molecule is gradually broken down into carbon dioxide and water. Along the way, some ATP is produced directly in the reactions that transform glucose, but much more ATP is produced later in a process called oxidative phosphorylation. But let's start with the first stage, glycolysis, that takes place in cytosol. Here you can see that during this stage, glucose is split into two molecules of pyruvate. During second stage, the pyruvate crosses a double membrane of the mitochondrion to enter the matrix. Pyruvate, which is a 3-carbon molecule, is altered to acetyl coenzyme A, which is a 2-carbon molecule, in the process of pyruvate oxidation. Acetyl coenzyme A is responsible for kick-starting the citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle. I won't go into details right now, I will leave it for another video, but the citric acid cycle has eight important steps, during which two carbons that were originally the acetyl group of acetyl coenzyme A are released as carbon dioxide, one of the major products of cellular respiration. And this cycle provides the electrons that fuel the process of oxidative phosphorylation, or major source of ATP. Oxidative phosphorylation is the final stage. It occurs in the mitochondrial inner membrane. The main aim of oxidative phosphorylation is to produce multiple molecules of the energy-carrying molecule, ATP. ATP is produced from the phosphorylation of ADP, hence the word phosphorylation in oxidative phosphorylation. And this is why we need oxygen, so carry on breathing. Don't forget to learn something new every day and see you later!